Five ABP Aquabike World Championship headed to Olbia on the Italian island of Sardinia, where notoriously rough water conditions awaited as round two of the 2018 season got underway with a Grand Prix of Mediterranean. There were 149 riders from 30 countries competing in Olbia in an action-packed event spread out over various categories. Besides the Ski Division GP1 and Lady Ski GP1 were the Ski GP2 and Ski GP3 events, not to mention Freestyle, Runabout GP1, Runabout GP2 and Runabout GP4. In this program, we bring you all the ski action from Round 2. The coastal city of Olbia is one of the most beautiful corners of the Mediterranean island of Sardinia. Situated in the northeast of the island, Olbia is a classic beach town with sun, sea and sand that attracts visitors and holiday makers to this idyllic location year-round. But it's also a place with a very ancient and illustrious history that goes back thousands of years and spans many different cultures and epochs, all represented in the varied architecture of the old city quarters till this day. Crowning the city center of Olbia is the impressive San Simplicio Basilica, which is surrounded by a lively town square. This is a city with no shortage of incredible views and vistas, as the city and the surrounding countryside, beaches, islets and distant hills all make for one of the most lovely settings in the Mediterranean. It was the perfect setting for the UIM ABP Aquabike World Tour as the island welcomed the Aquabike family. Known for its choppy and rough open water conditions, the Olbia circuit is a small, tight, technical and very demanding one where experience and physical stamina will be key. Yeah, today it's a special race course. Uh, it's very different uh, than last week. Uh, we have a short race court with a short track, a big wave. Uh, when we start, it's flat, but uh, after a few laps, the wave is coming because uh, one jet ski pass and the wave uh, go against the wall and the wave is coming back. So uh, we have to be focused, no mistake. The people who is going to win the race is the people who don't do mistakes. So you have to be very strong. Uh, be careful and uh, smart to, to do a good race. After a thrilling opening round at the Grand Prix of Italy in Gallipoli, the Ski Division GP1 will see a resumption of the rivalry between Rafael Moren and Kevin Ryder. With a moto win apiece in round one and both riders on 45 points in the championship standings, all eyes are on these two as they rekindle their on water battle. Yeah, I won last race, uh, it was the really hard condition. Uh, I was not the fastest, but I don't mistake, and uh, yes, now I'm first in the championship. It's new race, uh, new condition, and uh, I keep focused on the championship, not on the race. So I will race like I know, and uh, we'll see what happens. Grand Prix of Italy champion Rafael Moran aims for two Grand Prix wins in a row, while former world champion and round one runner-up Kevin Ryder will be looking to get his first Grand Prix win of the season. Yeah, last race was good. Um, second moto, I made too many mistakes, missed too much buoys, crashed too hard, and that you know cost me any chances of passing Rafael. But I feel good, I feel confident for this one. The track is nice, it's gonna get rough, it's gonna be hard, and I think it's gonna be a hell of a fight. But Moran and Ryder will have a formidable field of riders to deal with, not least of which is defending world champion Quinton Bosch of Belgium. He wants to make up for a disappointing round one where he failed to get on the podium. And then there are the Pere brothers. Round one podium placer and two-time world champion Mikael Pere is back in action, and so are his brothers Morgan Pere and four-time world champion Jeremy Pere after having missed round one. All three Pere's will be racing their bullet V3s against the might of the Kawasaki's. All 
also in the mix are the likes of Stan Shetline, the super consistent Norwegian, always a contender and looking to continue his climb in the series as he pursues that first ever Grand Prix title. Division GP1 Moto 1 at Olbia was on as riders completed their customary parade lap to greet the crowds and warm up their engines ahead of the battle to come. The man who produced the fastest lap time in qualifying was Kevin Ryderer, the Austrian in pole position for the running start with Quinton Bosch in P2, Jeremy Perret in P3, surprise name Lucas Pinar of Czechia in P4, then Grand Prix of Italy winner Rafael Moran in P5, followed by Shetline, Morgan Perret and Mikhail Perret. The riders in position, waiting for the flag. There they go. Ryder on the blue victory ski in pole position with the inside most lane. Great start from Ryder and also a great start from Jeremy Perret, the four-time world champion right there, pulling ahead of the 2015 world champion from Austria. Despite missing out on round one, it's still early days yet, and Jeremy Perret wants to see if he can manage to get his campaign for a fifth world title off to a good start here in round two. Jeremy Perret opens a handy little lead as he leads the field around the hole shots. Kevin Ryder is right up there with Jeremy Perret, trying to wrest the lead from his erstwhile nemesis as they enter the split course. Jeremy Perret in the green, Kevin Ryder in the blue track. It's Kevin Ryder. The Austrian is faster than Perret. He takes the lead from the Frenchman. The positions, Kevin Ryder in the lead, Jeremy Perret bumped down to second, then defending world champion Quinton Bosch, followed by round one winner Rafael Moran, Mikhail Perret fifth, and Stan Shetline in sixth. But there's also a host of talented riders behind the lead skis, names like Estonians Martin Manny and Marcus Lutzikert, and also Ulrich Bernsen of Norway. In lap one, Stan Shetline overhauls two-time world champion Mikhail Perret. Shetline moves up into fifth. Now there's a three-way tussle between Jeremy Perret and Rafael Moran in the green track of the split course and Quinton Bosch in the blue course. It's very tight. Jeremy Perret comes out in the lead, but only just. Quinton Bosch is breathing down Perret's neck with Moran right behind them, but no change in positions. Back in the parallel split course on lap six, the three riders go at it again. Quinton Bosch in the blue track and Jeremy Perret and Rafael Moran in the green. Perret keeps his lead, but as they come out of the alternate track, Bosch and Jeremy Perret collide. Bosch still up and running, but Perret in the water and out of the race. Jeremy Perret has an injury. He doesn't continue as he's taken off the course. Here's the replay. Jeremy Perret turns suddenly into Quinton Bosch's path, and collision seemed unavoidable. That moved Bosch into second and Moran into third. But one lap later, Quinton Bosch went for the penalty buoy, which gave Rafael Moran his opportunity to pass the Belgian and move into second position. It's now Quinton Bosch chasing Moran, the Grand Prix of Italy champion. In the final three laps, Kevin Ryder is sailing to a comfortable 20-second lead with Rafael Moran in second position. Ryder negotiating his way through the back markers, and that pretty much concludes this race. Kevin Ryder is running to a comfortable second moto win out of three races this year. Great results for both Ryder and Victory Team. Meanwhile, Quinton Bosch continues to chase Rafael Moran to see if he still has a shot at resting second position from the Frenchman. And that seals it for Ryder. The Austrian has been impeccable all race. And what a well-deserved win for the victory team Ryder as he cruises home for a comfortable win. Yeah, I feel great. You know, came out with a good start, could make the pass for the lead in the first lap. And yeah, led the race till then and could control the race. So I'm super happy with how the first race went. And you know, I'm just doing my best to get another win. Rafael Moran finishes runner-up ahead of third place, Quinton Bosch. Fourth place goes to Stan Shetline, Mikel Perret fifth, ahead of his brother Morgan in sixth, with Ulrich Bernson finishing seventh. That puts Kevin Ryder five points clear atop the world standings over Rafael Moran, as riders now focus on Moto2 and the Grand Prix of Mediterranean title.
Japanese GP1, things got off to a very dramatic start in round one as defending world champion Emanelli Ortendahl kicked her 2018 campaign off with a moto win. But then she was shocked to find herself beaten by Krista Uzare of Latvia, who won Moto2 and her first ever Grand Prix title in Gallipoli. That race was awesome. I was so happy. I, of course, I was expecting it. That's what we trained for. But when it actually happens, you're still really, really happy. And for this one, I actually got the red bib first time in my life. And I really want to hold it to myself, so I will do as much as I can. With both riders on 45 points apiece in the World Championship standings, their rivalry resumes in the waves off Olbia, where the one who can handle the rough conditions will have the advantage. Uh, in this race, the second one here in Olbia, I will be aiming for the top spot on the podium, of course. And these conditions really, yeah, they're good for me, uh, and not so big waves. So I will take my pro force and ride this as hard as I can. Once again, it's a field packed with talent as 13 riders vie for the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean. Round one podium placer Estonian Katrin Nilbe is joined by her Estonian compatriot Yasmin Yipraus, who also made a promising start to the year in Gallipoli. Kylie Elmers of New Zealand is also always a threat out there, as are the Borgstrom sisters, Jana back from injury and trying to recover her 2017 form, while her younger sibling Sophie aims to leave her mark on the series with some podium results. In the qualifying time trials for ladies ski GP1, Moto1, Emanelli Ortendahl got the better of Krista Uzare, the defending world champion would start in pole position first race of the Grand Prix of Mediterranean in Olbia. Uzare would start in P2 next to Ortendahl, then Katrine Nilbe P3, Molly Fern in P4, and Jona Barkstrom in P5 as 13 riders completed their parade lap and lined up for the running start to Moto1. The Swedish world champion leading the field ahead of Latvian rider Krista Uzare and Molly Fern who's moving up to challenge them. Ortendahl smooth in through the whole shots, taking early command of the race as Chris Luzare gives chase. Smooth open waters ahead of Ortendahl, who's on equal 45 points in the world standings with Uzare, so this race would determine who gets the points for a clear world title lead. At the end of the first lap, it's Ortendahl opening her early lead, but with Krista Uzare giving chase in second, then Molly Fern third, followed by Jona Borgstrom in fourth, and then Katrine Nilbe has fallen back to fifth, but she's pushing to catch up with Borgstrom. In a fight for sixth position, Kylie Elmers comes in tight on the inside as she collides with number 64, Yasmini Praus of Estonia. Here's the replay. Both go for a swim. On lap four, Katrine Nilbe's efforts pay off as she finally catches up with Jona Borgstrom and then passes her to move up into fourth and set her sights on Molly Fern in third. Ortendahl is leading, the conditions getting very rough and a huge wave throws Amanelli Ortendahl off her ski and that's all Krista Uzari needed to speed past the struggling Swede. There were no further obstacles to Uzare. Grand Prix of Italy winner Christo Uzare continues her excellent start to the season with a Moto 1 win at the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean. Emanelli Ortendahl finishes runner up. Third place goes to Molly Fern in just her third race in the UIM ABP series. Fourth place goes to Katrine Nilbe, then Jona Borgstrom, fifth, followed by Jessica Chavan of France in sixth. I just won again, I don't know, <laughs> that's so weird, but I, I told, this feels like home, that's why I felt like home, and you know you feel good, I'm really happy. <laughs> After the first day of racing, crowds and riders got to experience the thrill of the parallel slalom night show, where ski and runabout aces went head to head in a thrilling elimination style showdown. In the ski men's, Mikael Poré got past Stan Shetline in the semis before beating his brother Morgan in the final. While in the ladies, Emanelli Ortendahl first defeated newcomer Molly Fern of the UK, and then she beat Yasmini Prouse in the final to take the slalom win.
besides the Ski Division GP1 were the GP2 and GP3 World Championships. Show me what you got, cause the, floor is the GP2 event saw Benjamin Scharf of France produce a brilliant win in all three motos to claim the world title ahead of runner-up Andreas Thiessen of Denmark and Preston Matzdorf of the USA third. While in GP3, it was Hungarian Barnabas Szabo who pulled off wins in motos two and three to take the top step ahead of runner-up Maxime Faizi of France and Salman Alawadi of the UAE. Ladies, Moto 2, it was game on as Moto 1 runner up Emanelli Ortendal sought to overturn her loss to Moto 1 winner Krista Uzare as the rivalry between these two world standings leaders continued. Moto 2 was on, rough start for Ortendal, but just look at Katrine Nilbe. Great timing and pace from the get go as Nilbe leads the field to the hole shots. Her fellow Baltic rider and pole sitter Krista Uzare right up there with her, chasing the surprise race leader from Estonia as they enter the alternate split course in these rough conditions that are perfectly suited to the Baltic racers. At the end of lap one, Katrine Nilbe leads ahead of Krista Uzari, and now it's Jonna Borgstrom in third position, followed by Molly Fern. Wartendahl not even in the top three. The defending world champion struggling back there in Moto2. In a battle for fifth, Kylie Elmers tries to get past Virginie Morlaish of France, but Morlaish hangs in there and holds off the New Zealander. Morlaish remains in fifth. Way back in seventh position is Emma Nelly Ortendahl. It's been a terrible start for her as she tries to fight her way up the field. Meanwhile, Christo Uzari is trying to find a way to catch Katrine Nilbe and take the lead, but Nilbe is just too fast, relishing the choppy waters and big waves here off Albia. Uzari tries to get past Nilbe in the split course, but Nilbe is too good, too fast, too focused. In third place is Jonna Borgstrom, looking like she's getting over her injury and finding the form she had in 2017. And then in fourth, it's British newcomer Molly Fern. Ortendahl's attack is bearing fruit as she has already moved up two spots and into fifth place. She's setting her sights on breaking that top three. She has the momentum, the speed and the determination to do it. And on lap seven, Ortendahl overhauls Molly Fern, bumping the Brit down a notch to fifth as Ortendahl is now just outside the top three. And sure enough, coming out of the alternate course in the same lap, Ortendahl also passes her fellow Swede, Jonna Borgstrom, as Ortendahl moves into third position behind Christo Uzare. What a race from Katrine Nilbe. The Estonian records her first ever UIM AVP Moto win with a brilliant start to finish romp. Christo Uzare runner up and Ortendahl finishes third. That runner up finishes all Uzare needs to claim her second Grand Prix title in a row. Fourth place in Moto2 goes to Jona Borgstrom who edges out Molly Fern in fifth while Kylie Elmers gets in there in sixth. I don't know, I have no words. It was so hard, but now it's done. In the final Grand Prix standings, the Grand Prix of the Mediterranean winner is Christo Uzare. Katrine Nilbe is Grand Prix runner-up, and Ortendahl finishes third on the podium. It's quite a rivalry that's shaping up between Uzare, Ortendahl, and now Katrine Nilbe. I feel really good, really good. I guess I really like this bib. <laughs> it's red and I want to keep it to myself. So I'm really happy for the next GPs and ready to race again. Can't wait already. <laughs> The world standings after round two in Olvia, Christo Zare on top with 90 points. Nine up on Emanelli Ortendahl in second. Katrine Nilbe moves up to third on 67 points. Ahead of fourth place, Molly Fern and Yasmin Yaprous in fifth. win in Moto1, Kevin Ryder was the man with a target on his back as Rafael Moran and Quinton Bosch sought to strike back and beat the Austrian in Moto2. The riders line up for the Moto2 running start and the race is on. Great start from Quinton Bosch and Mikel Pore leading the field. Kevin Ryder on pole catching up with them as Rafael Moran also tries to keep up. 
Mikel Pore is flying on that starting straightaway to the hole shots. Quinton Bosch just a nose behind the Frenchman as Kevin Ryder drops back to third behind the two lead riders as they turn through the hole shots and into the circuit on the start lap of this 15 minute plus one lap race. But Quinton Bosch manages to get past Mikel Pore and leads the field into the alternate split course. Behind Bosch is Kevin Ryder on the blue victory ski and then Mikel Pore, Bosch in the blue track. Quinton Bosch opens that lead further at the front of the field as the defending world champion is chased by Ryder in second and two-time world champion Mikel Pore in third, Rafael Moran fourth, Stan Shetline fifth. Behind the front on a four, it's Morgan Perret chasing in sixth, then Pierre Gilbert in seventh, followed by Martin Manny of Estonia, and then Norwegians Ulrich Bernsen and Daniel Sve Andersen. Estonian rider Marcus Lutzekert is having problems out there, trying to get back into the race, but he's out and appears to have an injury. In lap four, Rafa Moran senses his chance and makes a move on Mikel Pere, trying to wrest the top three position from his fellow Frenchman as he zeroes in on Pere. As Moran and Mikel Pere lock horns, it's Moran who finds the power to get past Mikel Pere in a Kawasaki versus Bullet P3 duel. Rafael Moran moves up into third, Mikel Pore down to fourth. Meanwhile, Quinton Bosch maintains his lead over Kevin Ryder as the two negotiate their way through the back markers, a tricky endeavor in rough waters and a crowded circuit. But there's another story out there. Quinton Bosch has incurred a 15 second penalty, which will be deducted from his result post race, which means if Ryder can keep the gap between them below 15 seconds, the Austrian will be the winner of Moto2 and the Grand Prix of Mediterranean. Conditions get choppier and choppier as Preston Matzdorf of the US takes a little tumble, followed by Polish rider Kasper Kania, who nearly loses his balance but manages to stay up and continues to give chase to the American. Stan Shetline has rekindled the rivalry with Mikel Pore from the day before, where the two interchange positions three times through the race. Shetline again on Mikel Pore's tail here, trying to make a move into fourth. Kevin Ryder goes for the penalty buoy for a missed turn, but he holds on to second behind Quinton Bosch. Rafael Moran not close enough in third position to get past Ryder. But just as Shetline was hoping to get past Mikel Pore, another Pore, Morgan, comes up from behind and zips past the young Norwegian, bumping Shetline down to fifth. Morgan Pore moving up into fourth behind his brother Mikel. Another tumble on that long rough straightaway, this time it's Gabor Szabo of Hungary, who was in fine form in the second half of last season, trying to find his bearings out there in Moto2 now in Olbia as the ski gets away from him, but he's back up and running. Quinton Barsh, start to finish leader of the race, comes through the checkered flag first, but that 15 second penalty will bump him down to runner up as Kevin Ryder completes a clean sweep of the Grand Prix of Mediterranean, winning a first Grand Prix for victory team. Rafa Moran nabs third place. Kevin Ryder caps off a brilliant weekend, winning both motos and the qualifying in an outstanding performance for the victory team rider. Of Mediterranean win goes to Kevin Ryder. Grand Prix runner up is Quinton Bosch. Third on the podium is Rafael Moran. Yeah, uh, racing was good. I got off to a good start, uh, second out of the gate, and then I uh, just tried to be patient and without mistakes behind Quinton because I knew if I kept my position, I would go for the overall win. And yeah, I tried that, I tried to push a little bit too hard Mr. Bui and then just played it safe till the finish. That win moves Kevin Ryder further ahead in the world standings after round two. 14 points clear of Rafael Moran in second, Mikel Pere in third on 53 points, just one point ahead of Quinton Bosch in fourth and Stan Shetline fifth.
And that concludes an action-packed Grand Prix of Mediterranean in Olbia, Sardinia, with some of the best racing on water, not to mention the parties, shows, fun, and festivities that go with the UIM ADP lifestyle. See you in China for round three.